Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, where is it? This is just for you. Where are you, Cor? Cor de Jacques, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on to your hat. Where are you, good sir? Why are you not clapping? He's not here yet. There he is. I so wish I could do that right now. Okay, so, um, right. Uh, I've hitchhiked all over this, a lot of this country, mostly East Coast side, uh, and it's mostly been good experiences. Those don't make very good stories. Um, so, there, uh, all right. Um, there was this time uh, that I was stuck in Egan, Tennessee. I know you don't know where that is. They don't want you to know where it is. Um, <laughs> where my ex-girlfriend was living, and I was stuck at her house, had got stranded there, didn't have a way out of there. She was really ready for me to be gone. I was really ready to be gone. Um, and so I, was, I tried the, the Craigslist uh, method of, of catching a ride share, which I'd done a few times. Uh, sometimes works okay. Uh, guy calls me, uh, he's in Knoxville. He's like, gonna do me a favor. And, and come get me and pick me up and take me where I need to go up in Kentucky at the time. And I'm like, well, you know, the whole idea of the like one less car thing is like to not make a special trip just for, if you come get me, it's not really carpooling, so I'll find another trip. Anyway, he's like, no, actually I gotta get up there to uh, do something for my brother. Anyway, I was gonna go up maybe tomorrow, I'll just go today. I'm like, well, if you're really gonna go, okay, yeah, sure. But I was like a little like sketched, you know. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, but I really wanted to get out of there, needed a ride. Um, so, uh, I, I agree, but like, uh, I didn't tell him where my girlfriend's house was, cause you know, I don't know you, and, um, uh, ex-girlfriend, but I like her, you know, we're still friends, she lets me hang out at her house. So, um, wanna not mess that up. So we meet, uh, she, she actually drops me off. Um, at, at this meeting location in this, on this dark road where this guy found his way to. And I get out and I say goodbye to her and I go to the car and it's expensive uh, sports car. I have like car blindness. I don't know anything about cars, but it, um, it was uh, fancy. Open the door and I look in and this guy, like there's the little voice that's like, hey, uh, you probably shouldn't get in this car. <laughs> and, 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 but, but I really need this ride. I'm like, little boys, I really need this ride. I just gotta get out of here. Don't underestimate me. I get underestimated all the time. I can have, I handle whatever. You know. And guy looked, like, guy looked like he was dressed for a date. All right, you know, that's all right. You know, whatever. Um, and, and the cologne was strong and stuff, but I gotta get out of, I gotta get out of Egan. And I'm like, all right, all right, we're just gonna do this. It's just gonna be all right and we start rolling, and I, I didn't really realize until I got in the car and like the seat was like sort of sunken, you know, uh, and, and his was too, so I realized he's actually an immensely huge person. Like, uh, a man mountain. Um, yeah, and uh, it was not long down the road uh, the, the thunder and lightning broke and the sky dumped just buckets at a time um, for the rest of the, the, the evening. Um, there was like 10 foot visibility and uh, we could only go like really, really slow and he had to concentrate on the road, but he kept uh, incrementally making me more uncomfortable very deliberately. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was a step-by-step -step thing. Now I've been getting creeped on by old dudes since I was a little kid. So like, I, 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 I'm not, not you know, totally new to this whole concept. And I've been lucky, I've been lucky, you know, um, that like I, I, I was overconfident, I've always been overconfident, you know, and I always like, like threatened people and stuff, even as a kid and everything. And I'm just lucky some grown man didn't like bring me some grown man violence because I would have learned a bad lesson. And just like bluffs had got me out of it so far. But this guy, uh, was like telling me his ex-military stories and then his like like mercenary stories Blackwater stuff and then like we both found out that we're oh we both used to drive cabs 
So what, um, and he told me this story about like this guy that ran from him in a rainstorm and how he caught him <laughs> and sat on him in the puddle. Yeah. And, and instead of telling me what he did to the guy when he caught him, he turned to me and said, don't make a fat man run in the rain. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's funny to you. Look. <laughs> All right, all right, we gotta get through this story. So, uh, I'm like duly noted, but like I started using stories uh, to like hold, like buy time. I was like, well, I got a cab story too. And, um, and then he started making like, like more and more uncomfortable comments about like, you know, little straight dudes that just need to be shown like, like that they haven't like experienced enough of life to really know what their preferences are yet. So, and I'm like, uh, but everything he did, instead of like, he was trying to get me to have a fear of flight or fl fight or flight reaction, you know, whoa. Uh, so uh, I, every, everything he did, I just, I just like, uh, like answered him with another story or something, you know, but I never showed any fear or, or like recognized what he was doing. And when he put his giant ham of a hand on my leg, I like used my elbow to like, while still talking, <laughs> scraped it off and, and kept on with my story and just didn't acknowledge anything he did at any point. He never got the fight or flight reaction he was looking for because he wanted me, he wanted me to be prey. Um, and, Cause he's a predator. And I had this feeling like this guy is not only wanting to do whatever he wants to me, he's gonna kill me too. And I was pretty sure that he'd done that before and would plan to do it again. And it got uh, really, really more and more intense as the night went. Um, but I'm, I gotta sh cut this short. We got to Berea where I was going and um, I, I was like, all right, this neighborhood up here is where I'm gonna be getting out. And uh, if you just you know, let me off up here is really cool. And he was like, yeah, I might have to rape you for that. <laughs> now, I learned from this experience and other experiences how to not make women feel, so that's valuable. That's a good lesson. Um, you know, things like that. But when he said that part, I, I knew that he was, it was his last ditch attempt to make me try to run or fight him. And it's, I had my little toothbrush right here. Like, I'm like, this toothbrush is going in your brain. I hadn't carried a knife in 10, 10 years. But uh, anyway, so uh, I, I was like, ah, rape jokes are never funny. Gave him an out. And he was like, he took the out because he wasn't sure what I was. He thought prey, but like I didn't act like prey. So I like, kept him unsure, kept him uncertain. And then when I it was like, you just told a joke. Rape jokes are never funny. It's like, oh, it is when it's a gay man saying it to a, a straight guy. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, really still not funny. And I don't really even consider like rape to be a sexual thing. I don't think it is uh, about sexual preference. It's about violation and, uh, you know, uh, torture, basically. But then we got stuck in traffic and I was like, hey, there's a bunch of traffic, jumped out of the car, was like, hey man, I know you can make this trip all the time. I'll give you a call next time I'm going this way. Shook his hand, he's like, couldn't believe that I was getting away from him. And I did, and I went and bought a good knife. See y'all. <laughs> Yeah, I, he doesn't, I don't, I don't think in storytelling circles he can just, you know, drop his last name. Well, he's, he's like Cher now. <laughs> I mean, because, wow. <laughs> right? Yeah. I just get so excited, like, you know, I don't know, like pecan pie excited every time I see. <laughs> and let me tell you, that's something. Every time I see that Cor's going to come to the stage, I really, really do. I'm sorry, I'm still processing that one a little bit, right? Because we were like, yeah, <laughs> right? And I, great, fine. That's why I love storytelling, because you never know what you're, it's like Forrest Gump, y'all. It's like a box of chocolates. Yes. Okay, so are we ready? Can we get some scores for cores? Yes, yes? yes. my ladies, my ho-hos, nine.